Hello, everybody. Welcome to Weekly Trash, the safe place to cleanse your mind, body, and soul of all that trash you consume this week so you can consume some more tomorrow. I'm your host, Josie Van Dyke, and I am sitting next to the one, the only, Kim Olsen, everybody. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks so so much for having me. We already have been chatting for like, what time is it? Like 20, 30 minutes. Perfect. Great. I know. Should have been recording. Talking the whole time. boobs, all the things. I yes. love it. I already feel like we're besties. Yes. Same. So this is gonna be super fun. I'm so I'm excited. excited. Thanks for having me. Um, your story is super emotional. There's <laughs> tissues if you cry. Smart. You're I smart might cry. Girl. I might have to like yeah, lean I'll, over I'll and get some. Over. But before we get to the really heavy stuff, I wanna get to just know who Kim is, where she came from. So we're gonna do a dumpster deep dive on you. Today's Dumpster Deep Dive is brought to you by Thread. Let's dive into practical style with Thread. They've given the classic leather wallet a sleek update, focusing on simplicity and embracing the mission to carry on. Thread is your go-to for all things carry and self-expression. Now, let me share why I'm hooked on Thread's essentials, like the vertical wallet, wrist lanyard, lip balm holder. There is nothing worse than digging through your bag full of random stuff, so I cut out the chaos with Thread. The vertical wallet is my go-to solution, and the wrist lanyard and lip balm holder make everything I need just one reach away, simplifying my life and keeping me organized. And as a mom, I need that. So check out the entire collection, including these must-haves at threadwallets.com, where functionality seamlessly meets fashion with thread. Use code WEEKLYTRASH for 20% off your purchase. And thanks, Thread, for sponsoring today's episode. I love it. I mean, not that it's going to be that exciting, but grew up in Rexburg, Idaho. Rexburg. You're a potato girl. I'm a potato girl. I love it. For sure. Um... I have, there's seven siblings in my family or seven kids. You come from seven. Uh Uh-huh. So many. Five brothers. And then finally at the very end got my baby sister, who is my very best friend. Um, Where are you in the lineup? I'm fifth. So four older brothers. And then six years later, they had like a little accident brother. And then, and I was so sad. He's literally the best ever, but I was like, not a girl and I'm so <laughs> sad and then they decided to give him a friend and finally got my sister so love yes. love and do they all live in Idaho still no so I actually have two that are down here okay um Lehigh and like Pleasant Grove area and then I have a brother that's a dentist in Wyoming and then two brothers up in Idaho close to me and my little sister's up there too and are you guys close? Like, do you guys see each other, like yes. family reunions, things like yes. that? So it's hard to get all of us together, obviously. Yeah, There's like a hundred kids between all of them at this point. But um, we are all really close, which That's like so nice. I take a lot of pride in. It was, we came from very humble upbringing. My parents like were, we were very poor. Yeah. And, but well, they were just that like, kids. The, I know. And they worked so hard. They're literally the best, but- I have the best siblings and such good relationships with all of them, which I feel like that's so nice. Is nice and also kind of not normal. Not normal at all. <laughs> when there's that many, especially. So no, truly, yeah. it's not normal. Did you grow up LDS? I did. Yeah. Yes. Because I was gonna say a lot of kids, Idaho. Uh-huh. I feel like that uh-huh. kind of fits the vibe. And sure. I guess we'll kind of talk about that <clears throat> later on. Faith, sure. And all that yeah. stuff. Because when you have a lot of trauma in your life, I feel like faith. Kind of goes hand in hand and Absolutely. changes the way you look at things for sure. for sure. But so you went to high school in Idaho. Did you go to college in Idaho? Good question. So right after high school, I actually moved down here with okay. my best friend Susie. Um, and I went to Paul Mitchell in Provo. Hair girl. I was I love. Hair. Yeah. I uh, can't say that I've ever really done hair, but. You, oh, you didn't like pursue it after? Not really. I got pregnant on accident, married. But pregnant super fast. And then it was just like life was crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I have um, one son who's almost 16, which is insanity. He's like driving. Do you share how old you are or do you keep that a secret? Oh, I don't care. Because I've asked people and they're like, I do not share that information. (laughs) I'm I'm old. How old are you? 37. You look 29. Okay, you have to say that. No, like, but I'm not even you. joking. That's shocking to no, me. No, I'm like um, damn near 40. Like, I feel like no. at this point I should no. just say I'm 40. How old were you when you got married the first time? Um, 19. 
like right. typical, typical Mormon, yep, getting married. married super fast, got pregnant, like on birth control super fast. So yeah. How did you crazy. meet your first husband? I went to school with him. So okay, he's so also you guys from both Rexburg. Came from Rexburg. Yeah, you guys are actually basically neighbors, which is funny. He no lives way. like right by the Maverick. No way. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait, having a son with him, does he, what's the custody like then? Because obviously yeah. you guys aren't married anymore. You're divorced. Right. So, and we've been divorced. We got divorced when Pey- before Peyton was three. So really? Yeah. So um, custody is interesting. Obviously, I lived down here in Utah for eight years, okay. seven, eight years, and that was obviously a lot easier. Yeah. But lucky for us, Jesse has a job up in that's based in Idaho, so he comes up once a week, takes Pate. Pate's with him right now. Oh, that's great. And Pate loves his dad. He'll come down here some weekends. Yeah. Um, and it's like so easy and so good. That's can't, can't also not, not normal. I know. But if it's so easy, so good, I guess the big question is what happened? Like why not stay together? Valid. Um, so we got married. Again, I was 19. Got married super quick. Um, we had gone to school together but didn't date a lot yeah. in high school. But Rexburg's kind of a small town. <clears throat> Rexburg's so you, a small town. We all dated everyone, like yeah. each other and all the yeah. things. So, Incest. Yes. <laughs> all, all, all things. Literally all the things. <laughs> Funny story about Ryan Olson, actually. Um, and you're like, we're cousins, actually. We literally are. <laughs> but like You're far, dead. far away. I'm dead. You would oh die gosh. at how we found out. Oh my gosh. It was like Okay, the we'll worst. talk about yes. that. We'll get there. Anyways, so married super young. Honestly, like nothing big happened. He's a really great person. And I would say I went into it immature. I got out of it immature. And I have a beautiful relationship with him and his wife and their family. And we're so good. Like nothing. So was it you that ended it? Yeah. 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 Was that hard to make that decision? And for sure. Especially you have a three-year-old. Yeah. I mean, at the time he was tiny. Uh, We were married for three years, separated for a year of that. So really like, yes, it was hard. I would not wish divorce upon anyone especially divorced with babies I think looking back now there's a lot we both learned from it um and I think that it's like okay that it's part of our story and we both grew a lot from it but yeah it's so hard because you would have been 21 22 was 20 when I had Peyton 22 probably like 21 21 ish yeah yeah Babies. Like you bear, you can, you can officially order alcoholic beverages and I you're know. divorced yeah I know Wow. I know. So in that time between being divorced and then before meeting Ryan, what were you doing with like, how are you coping? Like what was, oh what was life like gosh. for you yes. being a single mom? So again, grew up LDS. So getting divorced is like not what you do. Yeah. You're not you don't supposed want to that. do that. That's- no. And then coming from a tiny town where like your entire town, everybody knows everybody. And um, again, like it just, it was a, it was a lot. It, it was a lot. So anyways, grew up in a tiny town. Everyone, it's like 99% LDS. Yeah, yeah. And so everybody was like, oh my gosh, they were married in the temple. She, you know, they got divorced. Like it was a little bit rough, but. Cause did you move back? Were you guys mm-hmm. in Rexburg at that time? Yeah, we were okay. in Rexburg. So after that, I had to obviously work and provide and I had to be going f- full single mom mode. And so I started working for Down East Home and Clothing. Yes. 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 Um, Utah based company. And I just started like climbing the corporate ladder and they called me and they were like, Hey, our biggest store, University Mall at the time, Love. highest volume. We need someone down here. Would you be able to come and manage it? And I'm like, of course, like I would love to get out of this town, yeah. get me away from all of these people that think I'm like the worst. Right. But also like that was all my own, like yeah, personal a little internal ish, too. for sure. So anyways, um, ended up Jesse again, like so amazing that he let me come and that he was able to work it out. I drove to Malad every single Sunday. We would trade Peyton off for a week at a time because he was young. He wasn't in school yet. Um, and honestly, I'm like those drives, so many of them, I was like bawling my eyes out. Um, because yeah, like you miss a lot of really big moments with your babies when you go through divorce and that's really hard. And really sad. No, I'm, I've seen it with friends of mine right now. And it's like Easter, Christmas. Totally. And it's not like, especially if you're not married again yet and you're just yeah. alone. 
and you're dropping off your kid, your person, and then you're alone. Like, what did you do when you were alone? Because you didn't really have family here if you're a Rexburg girl. Yeah. So I quickly started working for Downey's Corporate. I was over nine stores and they always let me be over Idaho. So all of our holidays and stuff, I could go up, work in Idaho and be with my family. So I, and again, my family was everywhere. I had brothers here. So I, even as a single mom, like I could not have survived financially without my family. There were so many times I was living with them um, just because like I couldn't afford it by myself. Yeah, you're so young too. Mm-hmm. It's not like you had anything mm-hmm. to really fall back on. Yeah. When you got married, you were a teenager. Teenager. It's not like Tiny. you guys, it's not like there was like, okay, let's split the money. It's like, well, no. money. <laughs> we had nothing. Literally like it actually nothing. costs more to get divorced. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, no, that's for sure. That's hard. Yeah. That's really hard. So when you were in the dating world, did you ever have any like almost marriages? Oh man. <laughs> Um, before you met the right one. You know what? Yes. So again, like going into it so insecure, you just feel like you have all this baggage. You're like, I'm this divorced single mom. Like I got this kid. Nobody wants me still young. So honestly at that time, like a lot of the, the guys hadn't been married. And so it felt like I was coming with a lot, which I was, It, it was a lot. You come with an entire situation. Looking back now, I'm like, well, who knew that list was going to get a lot longer. We're adding to it. Yes. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I did. I moved down here. I actually got into a relationship for three years oh, off wow. and on that was really, really bad. Um, really unhealthy for myself, for Peyton, for all the things I can hold on to like a ton of guilt. I learned so much about myself. I got myself out of that. You know what I mean? But it was, it was really rough for sure. What started the relationship? Like, was it good at first or did it always start pretty toxic? Totally a hundred percent. Again, I think it was a lot of like my own insecurity. Yeah. Just being like, someone will like me. Someone will accept all that I am. Someone's like not, you know, they don't care. You don't think you're worthy of more. They were divorced. They had kids. So it kind of felt like we were coming to the table equally but um I think for both of us again like not even processing our divorces and just there was a lot of inner work and growing up we needed to do and if I hadn't gone through that my marriage with Ryan wouldn't have been nearly as beautiful and so I can look at it at back at it now and be like that was rough glad we got out of that but also it made me like I had to go through that to like focus on myself yeah. and be like, Kim, get your shit together. Like what's going on? And then I found Ryan. So, so how did you find Ryan? Yes. So um, I actually met Ryan. I knew Ryan um, as the phone guy. Like phone he, guy. uh-huh. Okay. I know, the Sprint guy. He was okay. in my phone as Sprint. Ryan Sprint. I know. He owned 12 Sprint, well, 12 to 20 at one time Sprint okay. stores all up Is in Sprint East Idaho. Still a thing? So Bought out by T-Mobile, right? Okay. I think okay. T-Mobile merged with Sprint. I think, I think that's right because I'm like, so I, I don't think Sprint, Sprint is. Yeah, okay. I think it's all T-Mobile now. Um, which that all happened like after, obviously, we were married. So yeah, I knew him as my phone guy, and so he was like, in my phone is Ryan Sprint. He owned the Idaho stores. It'd be like, hey, I need an upgrade, or hey, my phone's not working. Yeah, and so. Uh, he was just like, I knew he was married. I knew he yeah. had a couple kids, but like, it was just strictly business. Like, I swear. Like, it, if I was getting guy. like, ex- give the trash, it'd be right here. <laughs> like, and there is none. Like, I we know. We were just <laughs> getting know. down and dirty in the sprint <laughs> store. Yeah. No. There is, there's no. nothing exciting other than he was just like the phone guy. So I was up visiting my family. Mind you, I had been divorced for like six years. I'd been out of this rough relationship for a while. Mm. Six Six weeks, <laughs> eight months, maybe <laughs> a little bit. Okay, um, maybe it was a year. Anyway, we'll get we'll round up. Yeah, I don't know. It was My, a year. I have the memory of a goldfish. So love. Yeah, we're, we'll see what comes. But anyways, went up. Was working Black Friday up in Idaho because we were up there with our families. Um, I was at the mall in Idaho, which is like this big. There's like seven stores yeah. down east happens to be Penny. one. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yes. You've been. I yeah. mean, Pocatello's yeah. maybe even worse. But Oh, it's bad. Yeah. 
Um, and I saw him and he was, he had a sprint kiosk that was like right outside. So I was like, Hey, how are you? Um, we just started chatting he told me that he'd gone through this divorce, that it was pretty rough. And I'm like, well, if you want to talk about it, like been there, done yeah. that, let me give you all the advice. Not yeah. really, but were you attracted to him? Like, were you like, Ryan was not who Kim would date. No. Really? Because Ryan is an attractive man. He is so handsome. So I would have never. Really? Mm -hmm. He was like Like, this. what was your type? Like, what's your ex-husband, your first husband look like? Um, Just like Was athletic, he your type? <laughs> muscly. Okay. Kind of pretty boy. Okay. Okay. Good fashion. You gotcha, know, like. Gotcha. Just. Yeah. He cared about materialistic yeah, things. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. That's like what I dated in Not high a country school. boy. Ryan was like not this a hunting fishing guy. Cowboy that owned every color of a Nike dry fit shirt. And that's like all he wore. <laughs> like cargo shorts, probably the zip off ones. Yeah. Like Under Armour shoes only because they were comfortable. He just did not care. Yeah. He was just yeah. not. A beautiful face, but the things he was wearing yes. were just. Mm. Which I love to always talk about because when I met him, when I like started talking to him, he had this big old soul patch, which is like so idle. <laughs> so cowboy. Oh my gosh. You know what that reminds me of? What's that movie? Just go with it where the, the soul <laughs> patch. No, it would. He like, he'd like <gasps> play oh with my it. Gosh, so no, not my no. type. Okay. Not your not type. Not my type. Not your type. Is it, what's the age difference between you guys? Um, like, did you ever go to high school together or anything? No, no. How much older is Ryan than me? Three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like time. three okay. and a half years. Sorry, uh, I like had to actually do math there. That's pathetic. That's but. hard. Math is hard. Yeah, we don't no. do math usually do. here. Okay, so. Good, <laughs> good. So I won't ask <laughs> again. No more math. Unfortunately, equations. it was only three. I wish. I mean, three. Like okay. seven would have been harder. Okay. So but, no, no attraction right off the bat. No, always he was very charismatic and yeah. like very outgoing. I like to think that I'm like semi outgoing and oh, can for hold sure. a conversation with somebody. So it was just like easy. Yeah. Even as my phone guy, I'm just being like, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Cool. See ya. Yeah. So ran into him, um, was like, well, if you, if you want to talk about it, like just reach out. I'm here. Whatever. I got a message later. I was closing the Rexburg store that night and he's like, I have to go check trail cameras. You can come if you want. And I was like, well okay like let's go I know I'm like quite the invitation yeah super um, flirty I literally you can come if you want I know so I was like okay great come pick me up I'm at down east so he came he picked me up we had like a 45 minute drive to where we were going he was like strictly business staring straight out the window 10 and 2 not giving me anything and again like my personality's like bubbly, yeah flirty. what made you go I'm in the so first affectionate. place I just I, I mean, obviously, I was, like, intrigued enough. Yeah, yeah a little. Yeah. yeah. But I wasn't, like, I want to date this man. I don't even yeah. think I was thinking that at yeah. this time. Just, anyways. Just I think a good time. Just, just like, sure, I can be a good friend. Poor guy going yeah. through this. Soul patch guy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we get up there. It's freezing cold. There's all this snow. He gets out. He just, like, starts trekking through the woods. And I'm, like dude, I'm scared. And like, like, it's cold and it's like the woods. So yeah. I was like, Ryan, can I hold onto your arm? And he's like, oh yeah, comes back. It's so funny because it's so not who he was. Long story short, we get all the way back to the car and he's like, okay, again, like 10 and two, see ya. And I'm like paused. And I looked at him and I was like, I'm sorry, but like you gave me nothing. Like, it was so strictly business. Like, yeah, cold, not that nothing. I'm, like, full of myself, but I'm, like, usually I can get someone to, like, flirt with me yeah, and have, like, like this. hot. No. No, I'm not getting <laughs> but you that, are but, kid. like, thank you. I'll take it, especially at 37 years old. Um, 29. You're 29. 29. You're thank 29. You. Thanks. Um, but I, like, called his ass out. I was, like, dude, like, you gave me nothing. nothing. And um, come to find out, obviously, long story short, I was like, at least come out and give me a hug. Yeah. So we got out of the truck. He came around. He hugged me. He's like the world's best hugger. It's literally what he is known for. Love. And um, we just like embraced and hugged and then he kissed my face. And so I like had to call him out. Then we made out a little. <laughs> and then the rest was history. Then he, Then I got him. Really? Yes. So... 
So the hug turned into a kiss that turned into a make out that turned into a marriage. Well, yes. Yes. Wow. I know. I know. But now, obviously, looking back, and clearly we talked about it, and it, like, became yeah. the joke. Like, yeah. we talked about it at his funeral. We talked about all the things. But he had gone – his divorce was rough. It was nasty. It went all the way to trial. It was, like, how we see some. Like, we don't get along. We don't work together. And I say that because in his death, his relationship with his ex-wife was so beautiful. And my relationship with her is so beautiful. And so it came a really, really long ways. Um, And I think a lot of that was just by being selfless and by forgiving and just moving on. But in that moment, when I went on that drive with him, he was just like, no, hell no, I'm not getting myself into anything again. This is the worst. There was a lot of trauma there. Yeah. How long um, had he been divorced at that time? Six days. <laughs> <laughs> it was complicated. <laughs> complicated. Okay, that's that's a good answer. Yeah, it was complex. But their divorce took a very, very gotcha. long time. Gotcha. So, yeah, it was. So how long? Because you guys dated for a while before you got married. Yeah, so I lived down here. Yeah. He was up in Idaho. We dated long distance for three years. So I know it was just like my little weekend boyfriend and wow, all the things. And Did you always know you wanted to marry him? Um, I mean, my connection with Ryan was so different than anything I ever had. And I loved that, A, there was no rush for us. Like, yeah. we were just good. And like, our relationship was so beautiful. It was so easy. It was... I don't think, I think both of us were like, we're good. But also, at what point do you come together? Obviously, we wanted to spend more time together. And with that, again, was a really, it was complex because Peyton and his dad were here. And like, it was myself moving up there because his business and all of his stores were up there. And so it wasn't like just a quick, sure, like, let's pick up and go. So, um it was actually what got us up there was like, okay, school is about to start. And if we're going to do this, we should probably do it so he can start school up there so he can get on this football team up there because they start practicing in the summer. He can like get some friends that way. So it was kind of just trying to methodically think about timing. Because he has two kids. Ryan has two kids, boy and a girl. And I feel like his son and your son are close in age, are they not? Yeah. So Pete is 15, Riker's 13, JoJo's 10. Okay. Yeah. And was meshing all of that pretty simpankot nuts. What the? That was a great, you know what? We like- what word was, was I trying to say? Simpankot. I was, <laughs> I was sure. trying to say simple and then I was trying to say simpa- simpatico or what's that word? Do you know what I'm saying? Am I having a stroke? <laughs> I'm having a stroke. I have it's dyslexia fine. if you didn't know. Well, um, so it's, it's showing. Fine. It's showing. Uh, but was it simple? <laughs> it was... Bringing a family together, blending a family is never simple, yeah. honestly. Um, yeah, it's hard for the kids. It's hard for them to like come together and to share time and share yeah. things and share space. It's hard. It's hard with all of the like balancing. It's hard with the relationships that you're also having to deal with. Right. Um, but again, like lucky for us and I will stand behind any microphone and shout like I'm very proud of the blended family situation that I have. And if I could ever give advice or talk to anybody and help them get there, I would do it a million percent because it's just like the only people you're hurting when it's not like that is your babies and yourself, Yeah, you know? And so I think a lot of it is just letting go and forgiving and just Just having the the best interest of the kids. Yeah, Like, hey, I know it's your birthday or it's you got something going on for sure. Take them, even though it's my turn. Like, it's okay. That's best for the kids. Yeah. You should have them. Yeah. Hey, I know it's my Thanksgiving, but if your entire family's in town, take them with you. That's better for them. They get to see their cousins. Like you have to be a little bit selfless for that's, sure. And that's hard. It's like, hard. It's hard. It's a hard thing to do. A hundred percent. Because you want to be selfish and you want that. A hundred percent. But yeah, you got to yeah. put the kids first and yeah. it's hard, but it's worth it. Worth it. For obviously. Sure. Yeah. So you guys get married. Was it 2020? 
2018. 2018. Okay. Yes. But you had the prettiest wedding, like your pictures you. out in like the wilderness. Which is so funny. You turned into a wilderness girl. I know. Oh yeah. I had to. I had no choice. Like, like started okay. dating this guy. And again, I'd be like, hey, like I randomly picked you up these Lulu pants. Like <laughs> let's get rid of these baggy suit pants that you wear to work every day. Yeah. <laughs> like let's get rid of these slacks. We'll just put in some ABC pants. And yeah. like, Hey, anyways, so we started, we started just like introducing all the things. Yeah. Um, came up to Idaho. What was I answering? Your wedding. It was nurture girl. You became a nature girl. Yes, I became a nature girl. Um, we were coming up, we were moving to Idaho. Both of us were like, we do not need a big wedding. We don't, he was very frugal, very cheap. I don't even like the word frugal. Like he was cheap. He was cheap. He was like, I like to save my money. I don't spend money on anything. Unless it has to do with hunting or horses. Um, But anyways, so we just like neither of us wanted anything big. And I was just talking with Susie about it. She, She was a photographer and she's like, come out here and get married. She lived in Colorado at the time. So we went to Crested Butte, literally just the two of us. And it was myself, Ryan, Susie, and Todd. Susie brought her camera. Todd got his like officiating license on some website for $50. Incredible. And we just eloped in the mountains up there. And our pictures are incredible. They're beautiful. But you'd never know that there was like literally nothing. We got ready in like some little hotel literally (laughs) but it was just so like pure and like magical and intimate magical like so laid back so easy going obviously we put a little bit of thought into like the photo part of it she had some friends she was in the influencer space and so she was able to use some of those connections um for also like branding and promoting these businesses which was really sweet of her to leverage her community for ryan and i but it just kind of worked it was magical. Did and then I went fly fishing oh, the then, next day. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was your honeymoon? honeymoon. So we fly got, fishing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. You're so brave. Uh-huh. I love that for me. <laughs> went, oh learned how to fly fish. That was a painful experience, mostly for the guide. Like, bless his heart. I was a mess. In Colorado? In Colorado. Yeah. It was like, it's right on the river that Ryan always wanted to yeah, fly fish. Yeah, it was fish. Ryan's dream honeymoon. Yeah. He's like, this <laughs> he is was. It's perfect. perfect. Yeah. What would have your dream honeymoon been? I mean, I love sunshine. Yeah. I love, like, give me a beach and sunshine and, like, re- relaxation, and I'm so good. I am not, not a like pool. a tur. I am not touristy. I'm not, like, I don't want to do all the adventures and all the things. I'm the same way. I just want to, like, relax. I want to lay down. Same. And do nothing. Same. Yeah. People think I'm so boring. No, Same. I'm like, they're let's like eat, excursions. Sleep. I'm like, no, I don't know. I'll look at it in pictures. I'm yeah. good. Like if it's a seven day trip, okay, we can do one day. Yes. One, but the other six, we're not leaving the resort. Yes. Like we're staying here. We're relaxing. I'm with you. We're going to the spa. Yeah. We're eating by the pool. Same. I, know. I feel All that. the food. I do love I good feel food. That. So the more heavy part yeah. of your situation is Ryan passed away almost three years ago. Yes. This month. <clears throat> Coming up in May. May. Next month. It's April. I know. Oh well, it's okay. I it's thought it was May for a so second. soon. And that obviously was not expected. It was a crazy accident. Um, if you feel comfortable, sure. Can you share that day with us? Yes. So um May seventeenth, twenty twenty one is when the accident happened. Um I was in the thick of building Jovi. And right, I had just gotten home from Hawaii from a trip with my friends. It was a really quick trip. And Ryan had just gotten home from a hunting trip. So we had Saturday and Sunday together with our little family. We brought the kids all together. Um, I got home and I always like point this out because it's so random, but I got home. Ryan had had the kids paint me a sign on a cardboard piece of cardboard, like this giant Sweet. piece of cardboard that was like, you're the best mom ever. It had flowers on it. Um, he had set up like weather tech mats and had flowers for me and it was like all on the table and I got home. I was like, oh my gosh, like, thank you. You know, yeah. just a random tender mercy that now I look back and I'm like, oh my That's gosh. That's the last moments. Yeah. So Saturday and Sunday, we just stayed at home. Like we had so much to do. We were catching up. We were tired. Um, we did normal like 
uh, yard work, literally. Yeah. Yeah. We found a nest of brand new baby birds. So oh, okay. you're going to have that soon. Congratulations. Yes, yes. If you don't follow me on Instagram, yes. I have a bird issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, we found brand new baby kitties. So the kids were just like stoked. It was like a life. Again, Ryan brought me this life that I the country. The country. Like I call it the Olsen farm. Which would be offensive to any real farmer. Like, don't the, ballerina farms. No. Like, no, 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 I'm no, no, sorry. No. I have like one cow, a couple horses, you know, so many farm cats that just show up. Are you still there? Yeah, I am. Um, anyways, but we just had this really cool couple of days, just like all of us. And um, we laid down with our family, watched a movie that night. I, for some reason, was like, Jojo, get a picture because we were just like cuddling on the couch, no makeup, both so tired. Yeah. But we took this picture, woke up Monday morning. Um, that was the first time like back to work. We worked at the same office, though different companies, but worked at the same office. So um, obviously in the mornings with all of our kids, we had to divide and conquer. Right. His kids went to one school and mine went to another. So I got up to the office. He called me because he wasn't there yet. He's like, I'm almost there. I decided to go get my um, tires rotated. And I was like, oh, that's so random. Okay. And then I just got working. And while I was working, I specifically remember hearing all these sirens go by. But you don't think anything yeah. of it. And I was just like, oh, that's so weird. And then my little sister, who was an executive assistant at the time, um, she's like, hey, where's Ryan? He's not on our call. And I said, oh, he's almost here. I literally just got off the phone with him. Yeah. And um, then he just like kept not showing up. And mind you, this is like when I say kept, this is like 10 minutes, right? right? We're, but, but he was so close, he apparently. Was so close. So anyways, I remember I sent a text message to his phone. And the text message was like, babe. You've literally been gone for a whole week. They're all asking me where you are. Like, where are you? Yeah, like typical <laughs> yes. frustrated wife. Yes. I'm like, get on this call. I don't know. I, what do you want me to tell them? That's yeah, like what yeah. my message. Like, what lie would you like yeah, me to come? Yeah. Because I know you were close. So I went outside just to see if he was on a call or something from um, the just like on a call and ignoring yeah. me. Like he was in the busy, parking yeah. lot. So, and that, and I could see that they had blocked off the road. I could see that there was ambulances and fire trucks and tons of police cars and all the things. And I could actually see like three cars that were involved in the accident and none of them Ryan's. So I went up to my dad and I just said, Hey, let's, I can't get a hold of Ryan. Like, let's just walk over there. So it was that close. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's like the worst. So a block, like one literal block away from where I was. So I'm like, dad, and my dad's like, well, my car's right here. So we'll just drive over. And so I remember my dad and I was like, okay. So my poor dad, anyways, I got out of the car and the officer was like shooing me away. Like the road is closed. Yeah. You can't come down here. And I remember so naively walking up to him, like probably with a smile on my face and being like, I'm so sorry. This is so random. I just want to make sure that this silver car wasn't involved. And he said there was a car registered to an Olsen involved in the accident. And I said, okay, that's him. And he said, I said, is he okay? And he said, it, we haven't been able to identify who was driving. I obviously knew that Ryan was by himself. We haven't been able to identify who was driving, but the person in that car deceased upon impact. And I just fell to the road right there. Like, what else do you do? And my dad got out of the car and he's like, what? And I, I just was like, he's gone. He's gone. And it was, yeah. So he was rear-ended at the stoplight, literally one block away. And by someone that was um, having a diabetic episode, um, he had just started accelerating. The light had just turned green. And, but she was going like between 70 and 80 miles per hour just in town on a road and hit the back of him and he essentially broke his neck and died on impact so and he was doing everything right like his seatbelt was on he was so good you know like he was doing everything right except for again he was so cheap that he loved his Toyota Corolla because of the gas mileage yeah 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 um 
And obviously that, that impact was heavy. Yeah. That car couldn't handle that kind of impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So that's how you found out was on the scene. And the police officer that told you, was he aware? Do you think? I'm, I mean, I'm at, at that, that moment, point, he figured out. Yes. But was he like, point, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't have been the one to tell you? Or I mean, I think for them, too, like, how often is it that that the wife or the family yeah. or the coworkers are literally right there? Um, and I can look back at it now and three years later and be like, he was an actual angel like for all of us, like just so steady and so calm and strong. And um, like I was talking about it with my sister the other day and Jalen was like, I was asking him what to do. Like, what do I do for her? What do I do for her? And um, he's like, make sure she drinks water and just don't leave her side. And he was just like this calm, steady. They wouldn't let me anywhere near um, the accident, which obviously I'm so grateful for now. But yeah, I I don't remember a ton. Oh, I'm sure a about lot of it's like out. all of that. And even up to the up to the funeral, like that was a lot of trauma. But from that moment I called my sister. I said, I need Jeremy, who's my brother that Ryan worked for. I need him to call me right now. Ryan's gone. And then from there, which again is like the biggest blessing in disi- disguise, like my little sister was able to come out and be with me on the sidewalk that day. Then my oldest brother, my dad was already there. There was just like this angel army of yeah. people that were able to kind of like hold me up because clearly I wasn't about to leave. And then from that moment, I had to start making the worst phone calls of my life. You know, like yeah. I had to say, hey, Marcy, like Riker and JoJo's dad is gone, which is like the worst. And then I had to call his mom and be like, Ryan died in a car accident. And so over time, like all of all of them started showing up. His family was there. Yeah, just surreal. At one in just one second, like your whole life literally completely changed. One second. Like one freaking second. When five minutes ago, life was completely normal. He was almost there. You know, and um, an interesting part of our story is it was really preventable, like really, really preventable. And so that's like an interesting part of grief to deal with, of just being like it just shouldn't have happened. Like such yeah. easy de- decisions that day, that morning could have like we it, he should be here. Um, and obviously you can't get stuck in that because he's not. And the reality is that he's gone. But. But I think that's that's part of grief is like also being angry for sure. And I don't know if you feel comfortable talking about this, but the the woman who hit him, mm-hmm. have you spoken to her? <clears throat> yeah. So um, I can only imagine what she's going through. And I had a lot of empathy for her um, from the moment that it happened. And obviously – you don't know a lot of details yeah. and it takes a long time until you know details. Um, there was a trial through the, through the county and she did have to get prosecuted and we did have to go and sit in that. And that's like traumatic in and of itself and takes a lot of time. But in those, you learn a lot of the painful details, but that took time. So I reached out to her that day that it happened. Um, and offered my condolences to her, you know, and just like, I'm so sorry. I can imagine what you're going through. I had a lot. I still have a lot of empathy for her. And I can sit and say, I'm angry. Like, yeah, it sucks. My life is completely different because of that moment. And I worked freaking hard to get Ryan Olson. Like, I went through some shit. I had been divorced. I had been through this relationship I was single mom for so many years like yeah. just on the grind I I like worked so hard to get him and to have it taken away literally two and a half years after being married like I just wanted so much more time with him I'm sure yeah but um yeah I I we've 
conversed a tiny bit over text message, but not a lot, obviously. Yeah. So. But that says so much about you and the person Thank you, you are, though, to look at that with empathy and not anger when it's someone who is your whole world and it's it was so preventable, like it shouldn't have happened. It was such a freak accident that just almost you're like, is this real life? Like, does this uh-huh. happen? Well, and like Ryan was crazy. He was like so adventurous, like literal Idaho, like strong cowboy Got himself in the craziest situations in the mountains, was so adventurous, like dirt bikes, snowmobiling, horses, all the things, hunting. And I'm like, you don't die by getting rear-ended at a stoplight one block away from where you're going. Like, that's not your story. Yeah. So, yeah, it was – it's crazy. How did that affect – going back to when we talked in the beginning about your faith, like how did that affect your faith? I don't know where you were at that point. Like if you were an active member, if you believed in Christ at that time of your life, but how did that change things for you? For sure. Well, to your point too, there's no world. There is no world where you don't sit in being a victim sometimes. And every single one of us can. Like life Mm. is hard. And it's okay that you sit and be like, you need a moment. And it's important that you get out of the moment for sure. But yeah, it was, it was hard. And it's like, why God? Like, didn't, hadn't I been through enough again? Like it was easy for me to be like, yeah, I, and, and it's again, as humans, we all are like, well, their story or their situation is so much different. Or even with Ryan, a lot of people will be like, but but you lost him. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like your heart is your heart. So I wasn't active, um, in the church and I hadn't been for a while. I kind of went through a lot of that pulling away as a single mom and kind of going through that whole relationship and that breakup and just kind of trying to find my, myself and nothing. It wasn't really dramatic, um, which I'm grateful for. I've never been in a space to try and prove any religion right or wrong yeah. or to try and really like figure out who and what God is. Like I, I'm not in the space. I'm just not in the space to – I don't care. I, I'm so grateful that I grew up in a home that taught me about God and taught me that it was a constant in my life and taught me that I could turn to it and lean on it when things are hard. And I think while it's shifted – I still believe in a beautiful God. And God to me is like the truest, most pure form of love and something that I strive for. And it's like the most pure, forgiving, constant love that I need to give myself. And um, yeah, I've had moments of like being angry at God, but we're good. I'm so like, he's got me through. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I feel like a lot of times it can go two or go two ways. You can just hate God, not believe him in anymore, just be so angry and just be like, I'm over it. Or you really do lean into it because you For need sure. that. You need that hope and to know that you're going to see Ryan again. Like, For sure. Have you felt Ryan's presence? I remember we texted and you were going to see a medium. Yes. So How did that go? That's a whole, that's a whole story. And I... I, Susie actually coined it for me. She's like, you live in such a like beautifully neutral space. And I'm so glad that I do because even the medium, like, let me stand here and say, I'm not like the most spiritual. I'm not like leaning super heavy into any of the ways or any of the things, but I feel like I'm pretty open-minded. Um, but yeah, (laughs) a medium, have you ever been? No, but I, I'm intrigued. Yes. Okay. So There's one local to us who's really good. Okay. And I have heard like before Ryan died, we'd all heard about her. I mean, everyone knows her up there. Had you felt his presence at all before booking the medium that made you think he's around? I want to talk to him. Yes. So hold on. I'll answer that. I promise. Okay. So um, again, just like locally, people would be like, oh my gosh, this is my experience with her. She's so amazing. Carrie Muggs. She's so beautiful and amazing and booked like forever out but if you're gonna go to one go to her make the trip in idaho yes in idaho she's she has been so amazing for all of us so long story short like a probably a year maybe under a year before i had gone to her for the first time and and ryan was still alive 
And he was like, what are you doing? Who is this? And I'm like, I don't know. I just heard like it's really awesome. I grew up um, with my grandma, my mom's mom, super close to us. And I, she was like she, literally the best, my hero. She had passed away um, in November. And so I was like, oh, let's like go and see if she comes. Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe. So I had gone and my experience with her was insane. And like the things that she was able to share I'm like, you would never know because I'm going in skeptical. Like, what are you finding out yeah. on my social media? Even though there's not much there, who do you know that knows me? And are, you know, like, yeah. where are you getting your info? Yeah. But she goes into some really crazy details. So my experience was crazy enough that I was like, Ryan, you should go. And he's like, I'd be open to going. He had lost his grandma. So Ryan had gone literally like months before he died. And his experience was, like, pretty crazy. And so I feel like after Ryan died, obviously for me, that was, like, I got to go to her. Like, this is my connection. Yeah. This is the only way that I can, um, that, that I can, like, get a message from him. And you're so desperate. But I'm really grateful. And I think that it's really helped, like, my belief in it. Um, I'm really grateful that we both were open to it and that I like believed that that there was something and that yeah. and that I could feel him and I trusted that because of my experience that I had went and and anyway so yeah I've been to her several times <laughs> she's the best really yes and what have the experiences been like so one of my very first ones with her um again like you're you lose your person and like your future just died that day like yeah. your life anything you thought that you had you're just like what the fuck am I gonna do like yeah. where does life go from here how do I dig myself out of this sadness like I can't even possibly think about dating or moving on yeah. or a life with anybody else like he's the only person I want like grief is hard and it is heavy and it's really, really complex. So it's with somebody that you were supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Yes. So my experience with Carrie, my very first one, um, gosh, you're like so desperate. And I specifically, I've never shared this. I'm sweating. You, I specifically, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like do you need to hand me? Hand? Yeah. yeah. Um, I would be driving down the road and I would like put my seat, my hand in the passenger seat and I'd be like, please just like, let me know you're there. Like, let my hand get a feeling. I didn't really know. Yeah, I was just, just like, I'd be bawling and I did it all the time. And that was like, I don't know if you're there, but like, I just want to touch you and I want to hold you and whatever you're there, whatever it looks like, like my hand is there. Same thing at bed at night. I immediately started sleeping on his side of the bed and I would just put my arm and my leg over and I'd be like, Please, like, just, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I hope you're here. So anyways, I go to Carrie. And that's the very first thing she said to me, Josie. She's like, do you keep, like, putting your hand over and, like, reaching for him? Oh, my gosh. I know. And I was like, you, just, like, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Not me crying. Okay. Um, but, th and then I knew. And I'm like, okay. Like, if I can believe that he's here, then, like, I know. Well, so long story short, I actually believe that in the very beginning, um, you know, and she knew so many things about the accident scene that day. Really? And she'd be like, were you, I see, I found um, a nickel on the road that day. And I remember, like, picking it up. And she told me, she's like, is there something about a nickel? Like, did you find a coin? And again, I remember specifically sitting and she knew things about the accident that literally no one knew. And she knew things about how he died that literally nobody knew. And in a lot of those moments, obviously, his car had been pushed into a ditch. And I was like so panicked that he drowned, like that he was suffering in there. And only I know, knew, like we had just talked to the coroner, we'd got the reports back, all the things. And I knew that there was like zero water in his lungs there was no breath ever taken under there and um but like she knew some of that and I don't know and maybe we should talk about it 
like what a medium is oh, they yeah. have <laughs> i'm like they're like i just assume it? everybody knows what that is well i know i don't know but they have um i would say like a gift yeah. to receive symbols and signs from yeah. spirit yeah they that fair it, yeah yeah like talk to dead people yeah of. i mean no big deal <laughs> yeah again anyways i know it sounds so a lot no. of my family is like what, what was that show the island medium did you ever watch that on tlc oh, no. she was long island medium me and my mom were obsessed. Okay. Who's the cute guy that has a show? Tyler Henry. Yes. No, I'm honestly going to get the phone number of this girl that you're talking about because my mom lost two sisters. Oh, my god! And I feel like this would be a great, like, gift uh, to give a her. A hundred percent. Because. And I have done that for people who lose people. I think it is healing. A hundred percent. And you're so desperate to know and again i think that there can be an unhealthy relationship with a medium yeah if you're going in there and being like tell me everything i need to make my every life move yeah. based off of what you tell me like i think that they're human too and they could maybe make like a, get mistaken, it wrong yes yeah. for sure mistaken for sure. a sign for something for sure. else yeah um and so I think you have to go in pretty open-minded and also like trusting yourself that you're going to trust your own intuition and your choices but she has been a really, really beautiful modality of healing for me, for sure. Because, yeah, you said you've been to her multiple times yes. since Ryan's passing. Yes. And every time I'll wait, I'll usually wait. Like in the beginning, I went every couple of months as much as she, and she was so great. Um, and, but she is evidence based medium. I don't know a lot of differences again, yeah. but she's evidence based, which for me is really good because, because then it's like no one else would know that. How the hell did you know that? Yeah. So in the beginning, I feel like I felt Ryan a lot more. And there was like this moment on my bed where I was like so desperate. This is a few months after. And I remember literally like feeling the embrace of a hug. I know I sound so no, crazy right that's now. That's not crazy. But in your head, and I think the most important part is just kind of trusting it and bringing yeah. awareness to it. But then, of course, our egos are like, you're like, whatever. Um, so, and that was another one that she like brought up and she's like, there's like an indention in your bed or like a hug in your bed. And I remember specifically thinking, and I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you for like validating, validating that that, yeah. that was like what was I real. felt. Yeah. So anyways, I don't go to her as often now. Um, I go every three months. <laughs> hey, that's, but I hadn't been, do. I hadn't been for a while and yeah. you happen to be like, Hey, can you come down? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. She's really hard to get into. I have Can't got to, to, I've got need to a conversation in. with Ryan. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I love, yeah. I love that, that you have somebody in your corner that can help you with that because, sure. and that you're open to that because I, like you said, you have to be open to knowing that it could be real and that this is a beautiful thing if you go into it being like whatever this is For not sure. gonna happen like you're full of crap a little bit like you're not gonna have that experience well and it's not for everyone and no. that's totally okay um again for me it's like just validation that he's yeah. around I know that I yeah. feel that I felt that from the very beginning but it just validates that he's around and that he's in my corner and that I truly think that he's like trying to help guide wherever the hell life takes us next but yeah have you when you were in your sessions with her have you asked like what does he like should I date what do I want like oh, what do I do like yeah where are you in that because you're obviously you say you're almost 40 you're literally not and you have a lot of life to live I do and I do know. you believe that you could find a person that you could love as much as you loved Ryan that's a complicated question um but yeah I think it would be really really sad if Kim's love story ended here and I think I can sit here and say that because I would be really really sad if the roles were reversed and someone else didn't get to experience the love Ryan gave and I would want that for him and in the grand scheme of things like I am young in that way and there's a lot of life to left to live and a lot of love left to give and, um, gosh, I think love is like one of the most beautiful modalities and you do not, um, you take such advantage of it until it's literally taken from you. And I did as well, for sure. So I hope so. 
it's complex. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the list of things come with now. Hey, but I do think, um, I mean, I, I can only hope yeah. that someone will come in. And I'm really grateful again. I, I went into my relationship with Ryan really independent. I was like, I don't need somebody. I've worked really hard in my yeah. career. Like I'm able to take care of Peyton and he was really independent and, um, so I was grateful for that in the wake of losing him. Like I'd been alone before and like, I can do this and believing that, but also like for sure life's better with when you're sharing it with someone. Yeah. You love. Yeah. You still have a very close relationship with your stepkids though. Yeah. They seem to be around, like, how does that work? Yes. Like, do, because do you have them on holidays still? Like, <laughs> yeah, because I saw totally you guys valid. at Christmas. Yes. So how's that dynamic? Yeah. Like, Again, so. Because you were in their life for how long? Five years? Yeah. Yeah. They were tiny little babies. So um, Marcy's amazing. And one thing about Ryan's celebration of life is my ex-husband, Jesse, like, sang at it. And Jesse and Riley have since had a little baby that they named Ryan in like in his honor. And, you know, Riley came up and sat right next to me while he's saying like front row. And Marcy was right front row. She was at every single thing with me. And um, they have never left my side. So Marcy lives close. She's like seven minutes away from me out in the country and so the kids still come every other weekend and a lot of times they'll just ask to come over during the week and she's so good and again so selfless yeah. even still especially now we yeah. don't have Ryan there where and she's still she's like whatever you guys want to do so yeah the last two Christmas Eves they've been with me which is like so beautiful obviously those holidays and those big moments are really hard and really painful yeah. without him um but to still have that piece of him like it's so great when I think for them too you're a piece of him for sure and it's still our home their home with their dad um and like I'll figure out and I can shoulder my own grief but to watch your babies grieve their daddy is painful and sad I, I, and I don't even think I know even like a tiny bit of what's actually going on in their little minds so they're great kids honestly well, I'm and Marcy is you. amazing and, thank you and all these amazing people around yeah, them that good. just are gonna love on them and help them grow up to be amazing yes. amazing adults and humans yeah, that's all we can hope for man but um Let's talk about Jovi a little bit yes. because that all kind of happened around the same time. Like so timing crazy. is so weird because so I feel like you, you guys launched Jovi, what was it, like four months before or something? February, three months. Oh, yeah. 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 So how did Jovi get started? Okay. Because you and Susie yeah. are besties. <laughs> so funny. So my brother actually was in, had invested and owned this technology. He okay. had gotten into it okay. through someone that he went to business. I mean, anyways, it was my brother. So he had already created a pain patch for the body. Um, I flew out. I had just like had this idea again. The technology is so amazing and it does so many things. But I had flown out to Denver to meet with Susie. Susie at the time, influencer, but her biggest thing was like, she helped start up businesses, yeah, like business coaching, build seven all the figures. things. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And so yeah, I went I out there. Yeah, I Susie and you guys for a very long time. Forever. When Susie I gave know. up her account for I Joby, know. I was there. I witnessed. Okay, I watched. you've I, been there from so, the beginning. No, I, that was Kim, a while. Kim, I have followed right. you for a long time. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad we're here. Yeah. Thanks for having Full me. Circle. Full circle. Full circle. Um, that was a while, right? So I flew out to Denver just to kind of talk about it and like be like, hey, I have this weird idea. The beautiful thing about Susie, if anybody knows her, or if you don't, like she is a dreamer. Yeah. And she is like, I don't care what the risks are. Like we can do this. And I'm like, ah. 
I don't think I can. Like, are we sure? Yeah, are we sure? So, and I really, really needed her. So I flew out to Denver. We kind of like dream- jumped up. I was like, this is so amazing. We need a line for women. Yeah. And so we kind of talked about it. And then she was kind of on the fence. And I'm like, you just have to see what it does for people. And so we used her uh, her community and we're like, hey, if you're in Rexburg, Idaho, and yeah. you're having cramps literally right now, I need you to like message me. And so we found these people. Sorry. No, we've get, both been trying not to cry. I know. I know. I'm like, I know. I, there's like some boogies. No, you look great. I would tell you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're okay. good. Okay. Um, but we were like, okay. And we went door to door up at BYU, Idaho. And we're oh, like, I remember. You're having period cramps. Okay, yeah. great. And we like handed it to him. And then we'd awkwardly really be like, okay, so like what's happening? Anyways, long story short, after a little bit of that, and once you see it work for people, it's like, how do you not invest and how do you not like really believe yeah. what it does? So um, that's kind of where it all started. And then for six months, we literally just like start to finish, built this brand, um, built a new product, built the whole and took all of her community along for the ride. Actually, like in, they were so amazing. They helped us so much. They'd give us ideas. We started hiring people that like were from there and we just started building this. And for a minute there, I was like really sad because it took so much of my time. And obviously looking back, you're like, oh my heck, I wish I would have just like held on so tight to Ryan and my family and been more present. But Ryan was like, loved business. The hardest work I knew. And he was all for it. And he was so supportive. And obviously in, in the wake of his death, it's like a beautiful tender mercy that I had that to get me out of bed to like focus on. So we launched in February. It was incredible. Um, we market it towards menstrual cramps. Yep. Does amazing things for that. Um, typically the placement's pretty easy. It's either like on your uterus or on your lower back, depending on where you have them. Um, Built the brand, built the name. And How'd you come up with the name, Jovi? Oh my, that process was so painful because we'd come up with something and love it. And then it'd be like, oh, it's trademarked or, oh, and you can't do this or, oh, you know. And we did that a hundred times and we're like, dude, we're about to launch. Like we have to make product. We got to. Yeah. We need a name. And, and we need a name. And so my little sister actually was like, well, I was going to name my daughter Jovi. <laughs> and we were like, Perfect. We knew we wanted it four letters. We wanted it to be like short and catchy yeah. and something. Two that, syllables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was just like, great. Oh, awesome. Nothing. The website's available. Yep. The domain. Bon Jovi owns literally every trademark except for something in the medical space. So there we go. No, it's it perfect. perfect. Yeah. And it's and just the, stuck. Just the whole brand itself. I love everything you guys have done. Thank you. And I mean, and everyone loves supporting women, but I feel like Jovi is like so girlhood women Thank supporting you. women it's just it's amazing and I was telling you like I've never had period cramps until this last baby yeah and you brought me one and I'm so excited Good. my period should be happening soon fingers crossed I cannot Same. be pregnant oh bless your heart I cannot be pregnant but you make really cute babies um, they're cute but I, th- yeah. I don't know I don't know if I can do another one well I don't know yeah. but I'm very excited because like I said I've been following along and I wanted to get one but I'm like I don't really have period cramps so I don't know what I'd yeah. use this for but talking to you now it's used for literally any Pain, yeah, really. I use it. I have one on me. I mean, you saw. Yeah, I like. Yeah. I have one on me almost always. And again, that's like the beautiful thing. And so, building this brand that, I to your point, like where we're just helping women, and there is so many people. It's just something that happens for almost all of yeah. us. And there's not a ton that there's not a ton of like things to take for it. Advil, and, and that can help literally. And so, um, but like watching stories of people who like really are taken out for days yeah. out of the month or who really struggle being a mom and showing up for days yeah. out of the month um, and watching what this will do and getting those testimonial testimonials literally every day has been so amazing and so fun. I bet. And we hired moms, stay at home moms. Susie and I were busy moms. Like, yeah, we wanted to build it in that way. And um, I had the most incredible Jovi team that literally just kept it going, you know, during in the wake of, of yeah, yeah, during all of that. And then I was able to like step back in and have a reason to get out of bed and have a reason to show up. And Jovi's been like a beautiful, tender mercy. 
for sure. Do you want to explain how Joby works for those sure. who have no idea? Because sure. I mean, it's going to go over my head, but yeah. I, I want to pretend like I would know. Yeah. So the easiest way to explain it is your body has its like natural electrical system. Your body sends signals to your brain. Your brain sends, sends signals to your body. And inside of Jovi, there's billions of nanocapacitors. You're like, okay. what the hell yeah, is that? I Same. know what that is. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's basically a whole bunch of antennas. Okay. Um, and when it's, when it's placed on your body, especially in a part where your body is like, ouch, this hurts, ouch, pain. this hurts, then it's going to work alongside your natural electrical system and kind of help absorb, quiet that noise. Um, That's so cool. Take the pain away or alleviate some yeah. of it. And your brother's yeah. the one that came up with this. He didn't come up with the technology. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. There's like two scientists, okay. the smartest humans ever, um, and my brother was introduced to the technology okay. and created. A gotcha. Brand. Yes. I was like, wow, so your yes. brother should cure cancer next. I No. <laughs> yes, that is not. That is not him, nor <laughs> can I ever take credit for anything like, to your point. Wrong? I'm like how it's over my head even, um, but no, we have two insanely smart scientists and then we have a whole medical team that's insanely smart and way smarter than me and I just get to bring it to people and reap the benefits of watching how it works and it's beautiful and amazing and it's drug free and you're not putting anything in your body and nothing's coming out of your body you know like no so everyone go get Jovi yes go get Jovi Use code Please. Kim. Use, no, for real, you can. I think it'll give you 50 bucks off. There you go. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes. And I'm like, my kids will grab it all the time for like belly aches or yeah. injuries from sports or all the things. They'll be like, oh, you know, and they'll just grab it all the time. We have them all over. I genuinely feel like it should be in everyone's medicine cabinet. I And I'm, I'll just forever. I literally tried to take it out of my pants and give it, it to her. Carly, you're yeah. like, here, like, you, here you can have this one. I know. No. but it's, How long can you use it? Like, do you have to buy like new ones every year? No, so it's time? reusable. It should okay. last you up to a year at least. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, you just, it has, it comes with adhesives that are basically like a Band-Aid. I don't ever really use them yeah. unless I have lost a few. So, gotcha, gotcha, but gotcha. I mean, most days I'm not in jeans and I'm just like rocking leggings and yeah. mom, <laughs> chill you know, mom. You know, yeah. So the mom uniform, mm-hmm. but yeah, it comes with adhesives. It's reusable. You just can wash it off with like mild disinfectant and warm water. Incredible. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So well, before we take out trash, I just want to ask you, what advice would you give to somebody who is in your situation experiencing grief? going through that, you know, insane life change that they just don't know how to cope. Sure. What advice would you give them to keep going? Gosh. Um, First, like your pain is so valid. And no, absolutely nobody, including myself, will ever understand the complexities of grief. And it comes with so many internal feels And it also comes with a lot of internal pressure to like get over it. No one wants to get over feeling as sad as we do and as dark as we do that other than ourselves. But I think be kind to yourself. Um, Freaking just love yourself through it for sure. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And it can look really, really dark and really, really yucky at times. And it's okay. Um, I think for anyone that know somebody or love somebody that's going through it just trust that they're like just love them and support them and trust that they're gonna figure it out even if they're dating too soon according to what you think or they're dating someone that you don't think is right like just let them figure it out and trust that hopefully they'll go back to knowing what they deserve um Ryan has really, really big shoes to fill. And all I could ever ask of my people is to just trust me that even if it looks a little messy sometimes or not like what you thought it should, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll figure it out. So with that, so you have been dating. (laughs) I'm just sneaking that question in there because (laughs) that advice took a turn where I was like, oh, okay. I... I, there was a long time where that was like the saddest part. Yeah. Like the most traumatic part of all of it for me and the angriest part. I was like, I cannot believe that I have to do this again. 
Um, but yes, I have dated some and again it's really complex yeah and um it's complex for a lot of people like that are close to the situation um and just trust it's I mean it's a rough world out there but it is I think I'm really really grateful a I, I always put myself in Ryan's, like, if the roles were reversed, I would want him to find love again. Like, yeah. I truly would. And so I just have I just have to believe, and I'm really, really grateful for what I have been through, that I even believe that my heart has the capacity to love yeah. someone again. And that feels really like a really big, beautiful step for me. Yeah. And I'm in no rush, and I'm wildly independent, and... I just have to hope that a magical unicorn who can take all the things yeah. exists and yeah. be as good as Ryan. Well, I love that you said that you're wildly independent because I feel that and I feel like you're in a really good place. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but I just feel like you're in a really good spot. Thank you. How, when do you feel like you got to this point? Gosh, um, it's like it's like life. It's yeah. like ups and, and downs. Flows. Yes, ebbs and flows. It is a roller coaster. And Right now, sitting in your chair, I am in a really good spot, and it feels really good to be able to say that. Um, I'm not like, if I was like, I'm dating the greatest man on earth, and it's beautiful, and I, like, that's not, I'm not here to yeah. take out that trash. It's, yeah. it's non-existent, and I would love, and I hope someday I can. You know what? I yeah. hope someday I can sit in this chair and be like, it is so beautiful, and he's so perfect. We're having you back on when that happens. Good. Deal. A thousand Done. percent. A thousand okay. percent. Done. Well, let's take out trash then. Let's get right okay. into it. What's happened this week? Personal Trash is brought to you by Hello Seconds. Hello Seconds is a high-end thrift store located in Linden, Utah, that offers a unique shopping experience for everyone. With a wide range of clothes, home decor, and accessories, Hello Seconds is the perfect place to find hidden gems at affordable prices. You can find brands like Free People, Lululemon, Nike, Anthropology, Zara, and etc. There are so many amazing brands that you can shop from. At Hello Seconds, the focus is on embracing personal style without breaking the bank. Bougie on a budget. The store believes that fashion shouldn't have a high price tag, and they strive to provide customers with fashionable options at affordable prices. With a constantly changing inventory, there's always something new to discover at Hello Seconds. And not only that, but one of the standout features of Hello Seconds is the affordable booth rental option where you can make 70% of your sales. Yeah, just selling clothes that you no longer wear that is another person's treasure. Sellers can rent a booth for $20 a week and receive assistance from staff in promoting and selling their items daily. But if you mention Weekly Trash, you will get that rental for free. So join the community of fashion forward individuals who appreciate the thrill of finding amazing deals at Hello Seconds. Whether you're looking to update your wardrobe or decorate your home or make some cash, Hello Seconds is the place to go. Anything crazy? Oh my gosh. I watched a documentary. Okay. Called Mother God. Okay. You need to watch it. I'm it, scared. These people, have you heard of this? No. It's on HBO Max. I think that's like the only place you can watch it. So if you don't have HBO Mother Max, God. literally like buy it just for this. Okay. I like don't even know how to explain it because it is a bunch of psychopaths. Like they're, no, not, I don't even want to say psychopaths. They're mentally ill. Okay. And they're drug addicts. Okay. And they start a religion. And this woman is Mother God. And apparently she also is Robin Williams, Donald Trump. Um, I can't. Like the list goes on. No, it is so crazy. And basically... How did we go from love is blind to Mother no, God? <laughs> no, it's truly really insane. And she's she passes away. Okay. okay. She passed away in, I think, 2021. They literally kept telling her, she kept saying like, when I die, like my body will ascend. Like the galactics spaceships will come and get me. Okay. Obviously that's not going to happen. Like no, obviously it's like another ascend. version of which, you know, shout out to Rexburg, Idaho, Tammy and Chad Dable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. like cuckoo. Yeah. Cuckoo. Great. Love that. Um, Obviously her body doesn't ascend, but they don't do anything because they don't, they don't call the police because they don't believe in the 3D world. That's what this all is. We all live in the 3D. So she gets mum. She's mummifying. She's literally, her body is mummifying in this bed for how, for over a month. 
I can't. No, they show her in the very... So when you do watch the very beginning, it looks like an alien. It looks oh, like sure. something you've never seen before. It's her. I can't. I don't think Kim, I want to it was the this. craziest fucking thing I've ever watched in my life. It's a three-part, three-part documentary. And my husband was like, what are we watching? And I was like, I can't turn it off. <laughs> like, it is like watching a train train wreck. Like, you're just like, yes. no, 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 no. But what's happening? Like, it was just... You couldn't look away, but it's so bad. It's so I, horrid. It's these people, I don't think I especially can watch. when this one woman, she brings her kids to live on this hippie drug camp. And you're just like, where's CPS? Where's who are, where's the father? Where, like, what is going on? These poor children, they're using alcohol as medicine. They're, no, it is I can't. like something I've never seen before. You, it's so bad. But you can't stop watching. Okay. Well, that um but it might- so my weekly trash is like I got excited about Tyler Cameron's <gasps> Sizzle Roll. Oh. Only fans? Yeah, that was aggressive. But oh. okay, but oh did gosh. that whole thing like not get us through the pandemic? That's what no. I thought about when no. I saw it. I was Tyler like, Cameron. Wow, I was really invested in you and Hannah and is like, my crush. When she peeped in oh. during the pandemic oh. out there and you're when like, they lived in the the TikTok Florida house and yes. it was disgusting. Disgusting. Uh. And I look at Hannah, which like she's engaged now to a beautiful man. They look he happy. Is beautiful. But how did you not pick Tyler Cameron? How yeah. did you pick, what was it, Jet? Do the we... guitar player that ended up having a girlfriend? Oh, yeah. That Sorry. was a complete ass. Bachelor. I would thought yeah. you meant after. Like, who do you think? Who oh. chose? Who didn't no. choose who? No. After. But like, when she was the Bachelor, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. she could have she could have picked him. Like, yeah. they could have been engaged. Yeah. He was down. I he know. was down for it. She let that go. Yeah. He's cute. But I do think he's probably the biggest butt boy. All right, for sure. Like. For sure. He's had to have had an STD. Like, oh, for sure. Like, how many women does he take to take back to Jupiter I where he can't lives? With the only hands real. That but, was, but it was te- April I'm Fools. Like, what's the teddy bear? Oh, I know. No. Did you click the link though? Because no, I did. Of course you did. I was like, is this real? <laughs> I need to know. I'm not going to like put in my information, Dying. but like, I need to know. So he literally got an OnlyFans just for the April Fools joke. Oh, okay. Like, downloaded okay. it. But then. He okay, was, but also, like, he'd probably make a lot of money. So he'd make so much what? money. Just go with he was it, making Tyler. so much money, but, like, he's above it. He doesn't need to. I agree. But he has this new show, this new yeah. TV show, like, where he renovates places. And I think that's a good path for him. He sure. can be, like, the new hot Chip and Joanna, Joanna Gaines. Gaines. That's yeah. what I thought about. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he's a stud. I mean, he's cute. I also think I'm way older than him. But it was no, just funny he's that my, I think he's like twenty nine. He's like my age. Okay, and you fine. look like you're my age. So no, we could make it work. But I was just dying we over it. it I was like, oh wow, Tyler Cameron. Haven't thought about you since literally the pandemic when we were all stuck in our homes. And I Watching was like you on TikTok. invested. Yes. I know. Do you have TikTok? I have it. I do not. I am not a TikTok. Do we think TikTok will go away? All the the government saying it's it's going away but i'm like didn't we say this like a year ago a year, i remember and that. then nothing happened yeah so i, I feel like nothing's gonna happen there's again. no world that that goes away i don't know it's too big i don't know what other trash has happened to you this week besides being obsessed with tyler cameron <clears throat> um this you have no idea the boring life that i live but do you live a boring life yeah like what is yesterday my day looked like work i go to work every day okay. i go to the office most days um and like this week I've literally been like which is actually big steps for Kim yeah. to your point there was a long time where everything in my house like I literally couldn't get rid of it was like a piece of rye and I just wanted to ignore it I didn't know what to do with it like can you imagine can you imagine grabbing his shoes off the shelf and being like let me donate no, these like no. it's the worst and you no. don't really think about it but um my little sister lived with me after Ryan died, and that was, like, so beautiful, her little family. Um, they have since moved in January, which was traumatizing. Yeah, that's kind of fresh. So. But um, I have just been, like, decluttering and going through stuff, and I'm like, okay, kids, we're Spring doing cleaning. good. So last night was literally, like, cleaning the chicken coop. I'm not kidding. You know what? There's some that's trash for you. Cleaning the chicken coop. Uh-huh. How many chickens do you have? I think there's – 
Have you ever tried to count chickens? Impossible. No. Um, there's probably like 17. Too many. Oh, oh, uh-huh. there's a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they like live forever. So like, do you plan on living in that home for, for I mean, till the next step of your life? Like, do you it's like it out there? Valid. I, I love, we're right on the river. It's like Ryan's dream property. I shouldn't say dream, but it's a, like it was, yeah. he loved it. There's tons of deer and moose that come in and yeah. all the animals and all the chickens. But, and you have a cow and a horse. No, not anymore. Okay. I yeah. was like, you were taking care no. of those? <laughs> no. You of that too? No, because it's also Idaho freezing cold. Yeah. Like got the biggest storm, winter storm ever. I think we get snow again Saturday and Sunday. Like it's cold no. and it's not fun to take care of those. So after Ryan died, his cousin and my brother took horses. Cows were gone. We've gotten rid of a lot, a lot. But still chickens. Yeah, we still have the chickens. I, like, wish I didn't have the chickens. So <laughs> like, anyone wants, like, 16-ish Yeah, you just need one chicken. Just keep one yeah. chicken. Get those fresh eggs. I mean, I think Do I'll you buy get, them. Yeah. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay, because people are like, homestead, get your chickens. You're saying it's not worth it. I mean, it's so fine in the summer, and they're actually really cute. And chickens are actually pretty easy. They seem they really s- scary and mean. They're not. Roosters are mean. Okay. Yeah. So there's a difference. But the chickens are fine. But, but aren't roosters the ones that... Ha- no, roosters are men. Roosters are men. Okay. Roosters make eggs sterile. Okay. But the only reason why you would... I don't understand all this, <laughs> just so you know. All I know is we accidentally had a rooster and it freaking... Have you ever... Have you ever watched a rooster do what it does? It like... No. Jumps on their back, pins their neck down with their beak... Does whatever it does. The chickens want to get away. They've like lost it. They're mean. So it's got rid of it's aggressive. But you only need a rooster, from what I understand, is if you want to hatch your eggs oh, into more babies. Gotcha. More chicks. But to just because then it makes them, them sterile. But no. So yeah, I get eggs. eggs. Yeah, we get eggs. And are they all different colors? Because I heard real eggs, the ones that you don't get at the store, don't look like the ones at the store. I mean, they look like the organic ones. They're brown okay, and white. Brown. They look okay. like eggs. Okay. But you can get chickens that lay like cute Easter, like like blue, green and blue. We don't have those. Wait, that's crazy. You just... This egg poops out. Is it poop? Do they... Is it come out of their vagina or their butthole? Do chickens have... I whole, just I can't I mean, they say have to. They studied poop. their anatomy, but it comes out of something back there. It comes out of some holes. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. But like, I'd rather buy my eggs. It, All was, right. it was like cute and fun when I had a family and like a husband to help me like clean yeah, and go do that, part. take care of all of it. But now you're I'm doing like, it yourself. Yeah. So that's what you did this uh, week is you clean the, the chicken coop. Chicken coop. Yeah. Love. And I watched a cult documentary. I know. I, so you really need to watch it. I'm scared. I really need to watch okay. it. I'm trying to think what else I did this week. I told you I have oh. the memory of a goldfish. I can't yeah. even remember. No, I have a. Are you like a foodie? Do I you love look? food? I'm like a fixation foodie where like okay. I find something and I eat it until I can't stand You're it anymore. Sick of, okay. And mine currently is this jalapeno honey cream cheese with an everything bagel with turkey. And Yum. I've talked about it on multiple episodes. I went to the grocery store yesterday. Cream cheese sold out. So whoever's buying my fucking cream cheese, yeah, stop. Your, yeah. I'm never sharing. I'm never sharing anything on this platform ever again. Are we like only on. one store sells it? Smith's and Harmon's. Or no, I don't even think Smith sells it. It's Harmon's and Macy's. Well, I would like look for it and ship it's it to so you, good. but I live in it's there's not a Smith's or a Harmon's. It's Tillamock or Tillamock. Oh yeah, Till Tillamock or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have ice cream and yeah. cheese. Cheese. Yeah. Cream cheese. It is so do you like spicy food? Ish, but Peyton loves it. It's so good. This jalapeno honey cream cheese. Like I would eat it off of a spoon. It is Jalapeno so good. Honey. And it's gone. Okay, it's gone. Sure. So if you find it at your grocery store, ship, I <laughs> ship it I over. Will. I'll send it. I'm like, heaven forbid somebody oh, leave me a tube. No. But it's well, all gone. So I don't know what I'm going to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I've been eating that for every single meal. Yeah. I'm also on trisepatide, so I'm not very hungry all the time. It's like okay. a weight loss shot. Okay. And so like that's the only thing that really sounds is good too. Is it similar too. to like Ozempic? Yeah, it's basically the okay. same thing. It's technically like better for you, but I... I don't think there's much of a difference. Wait, we you got a tattoo. Oh, yeah. I got this beauty. I got this rose tattoo. What Do you it? have tattoos? I, so tattoos and like 
piercings, piercings became like therapy for me. It's actually yeah. a problem. I so loved, I had I one love tattoos. before Ryan. Yeah. I call it my divorce life crisis tattoo. Yeah. Um, I don't, am I like t- talking too oh, much? This no, is a we funny talk story forever. I yes, have to tell you. You have to share. 20 year old Kim, 21 year old Kim going through a divorce, like so sad. I just mm-hmm. want to be friends. Uh-huh. I don't want to fight. And I, all the things came down to Utah. I think I was like interviewing for some for this job or yeah. just chatting with him or coming yeah. to see the store. Had my little sister with me who's probably, I don't even know, like 15 yeah, at the time, say, maybe cause... younger. It's 11 p.m. We're on University Avenue okay. in Orem, Utah. It's like 11, 11.30. There's this tattoo sign. Mind you, I like grew up LDS, like yeah. very naive, very yeah. like didn't do any Prim of the proper. things. Yes. I mean, you I don't, don't put a, you don't put a bumper sticker on a Bentley. Kid. Yes. <laughs> yes. And there's like this tattoo light. And I was like, Jalen, I'm getting a tattoo. And she's like, okay. And she's like, what are you? <laughs> I can't. I can't even. I'm actually embarrassed to admit it. I've never told this story either. I'll tell it to my closest people. Let's but here we it. are. Here um, we are. So I walk into this tattoo shop. Okay. There's this guy covered in head to toe. Like, of course. Like I was a little scared again yeah. from a tiny little Mormon town. It was a lot for me. His and name he's is in Orem? Justice. What is he doing in Orem? His name is Justice. He just gotten out of jail. And oh. I'm like, I want a tattoo. Anyways, my sister drew it. It said endure with love. Going through my divorce, put it on my ribs, got endure with love. It kind of like looked like eat dirt with love. That became like a joke. I'm dead. Between my people. Eat dirt with love. That is the title of this <laughs> podcast. Eat dirt with love. Yeah. Someone was like, does that say eat? I'm like, yes. You know what? Yes. Eat dirt with love. So long story short, Ryan died and birds and hawks and eagles became like a very big symbol for the kids and the family. So I have this one, which if you look closely, has like the white because that's like Ryan so with all of our oh little family. And then gorgeous. last year on the May 17th anniversary date or close to it, I go and get one with his sister. I have the last few years. So this is I Love You in Ryan's handwriting. It's gorgeous. Um, I have like, I'm basically a walking Ryan no. shrine. No, I love it. My As love is be. what he always called me. So I have my love right here. Um, I have a P right here for Peyton. I got 333 three, three on my hips, which is like Ryan's number. Okay. He, threes were always his number. And again, just kind of a way that we feel like he shows up for us. So yeah. I have that on my hip. And then I got Eat Dirt With Love removed. I'm sorry. It you no longer did. exists. Which, was that painful? What was that process So where like? I went, they actually gave me shots of, they like numbed it. Oh, okay. Which I know. And it worked. Anyone I've heard. From says it's so painful and your ribs are already like a really oh, that's painful. where I got my first tattoo too I I don't know why I feel like a lot of women when they get their first tattoo it's on their ribs because it's like hidden You're yeah like my swimsuit yeah exactly it. and it's always yeah. ugly <laughs> so bad it's kind of like your tramp horrible. stamp like yeah who no. yeah who do we know that has a really good one um but it didn't I didn't I worked to remove it enough that I could cover it Okay. So, but it was a lot of sessions and it's expensive. Yeah. So I removed it enough and then I have a big floral piece right here, which is pretty like August flowers, which is the month that we got married. Pretty. And I'm like, May's coming up, so I'll probably get another Yeah, one. what are you thinking? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Get and a I'm fish. like, I'm like kind of running out of spots. No, there's plenty of room. You know what you should get? I love neck tattoos. I think they're they're really gorgeous. I think that collarbone ones are really sexy. Yes. Um, I like the ones down the spine. Yes. No, I think you should do something there. But I like the neck too. Like I've seen the ones where it's like cursive writing and it's like right across here. And it's like really badass and like sexy. And I'm like, here's the thing. I say this on my solo this week. I always wanted a lot of tattoos. I love tattoos. My husband thinks they're ugly. Super unfortunate for me because I would be like sleeves, sleeves. I think a sleeve on the right woman is so sexy. I think, and like I love like the sticker tattoos too, where it's like kind of all over the place and like. Okay, so that's like kind of where I feel like I've been going. Yeah, and I think I've scared. I think I'm like I feel like maybe someday I'll regret. So, the stickers. Yeah, yeah. So I'm. So I. But it's like 
It's a story. Yeah, for sure. Because like the one on my ribs that is so ugly, it's a story. For sure. I'm like, do I regret it? Yes. Same. But it's, it's a, a story. story. Same. <laughs> so like I I just think tattoos are so fun and like getting them and like the pain I like I like was get no that's what I was telling Hannah who's doing this tattoo I was like is it weird that I kind of love that this hurts yes. me a little bit like, I know it became therapy it's it's kind of not healthy but healthy you know it's like I could be doing other things my boy justice <laughs> I could be doing- when I was 21 years old told me yeah. I promise you'll get more and you'll be addicted and I'm like whatever no like you don't understand this is a big deal for me no no no. and then here i am there's like a thrill yes i know thrill of like knowing you're doing something that's like so permanent but like in your brain you're not even processing that it's permanent it's like so i think that that's where i like i'm like i probably should put some more thought yeah and then i'll feel a little bit better even if it was stickers i'm down with that i think they're so cute too so cute and when i see people with them i'm like you're badass and you can rock that and you look so cool yeah yeah maybe i'm not i don't think i'm would you get a fish? Yeah. I feel like you should get a fish. Or like a very like fine line, like not like a detailed fish, but just like the outline of a fish. Okay. Super tiny. I could I could do a fish. That's cute. Just like a cute Can, little Yeah, fish. let's find some inspo. Oh, because we'll, we'll like find some. my luck, I'm going to walk away with like a rainbow Ooh, trout with no. like scales <laughs> on it or something. A catfish. Literally like ugly looking, oh my gosh, trashy yeah. fish. I feel like a fish could, but go. a cute little fish on your ankle that could be cute, like just an outline of a fish. Yeah, like do you know what I'm talking? About? Just like the here's the head, and then then there's the. Is it gonna look fin? like like the gold? Oh, I guess gold that too. That I yeah, kind of like used that. To draw. <laughs> but maybe a little more artistic looking. I don't know. I feel like we'll we look could up find inspo. a fish. We'll yeah, look, I think fish is because you were just posting about it's like a fishing fishing tournament. Yeah, yeah. So I, you oh, should Ryan get a fish. Loved fishing. I know. He get a it. fish. Okay. Get a pet fish. I, I'm do, do <laughs> not get a pet fish. I got a pet fish for my kid. I immediately gave it away. You did. They live forever. forever and they stink. And they stink and they're more work than a dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're the worst. I had. I did get Peyton a fish once. Oh my it gosh. Was no. Gross. It, too much work. Do not get a fish. And then we, yeah, and it died. Yeah. Oh, well, that's actually sad. nice for you that it died because mine wouldn't die. I feel like I haven't fed you in, a, in like a week. <laughs> die <laughs> and like, Why tap, tap the glass it's still moving i'm like Damn i can't it. just flush it down the toilet like that's abuse like i can't do that yes. so i guess i'll give it away so i literally went on instagram and i'm like if anybody wants this fish you can have it and a trasher okay. was like my kid would love it and then my daughter had the audacity to be like mom where's my fish i'm like you forgot about the fish my you kids do that with like the dogs all the things you didn't care about the fish yeah. and now that you don't have the fish you, you want, want the fish. Mm-hmm. You always of want what you can't course. have. Of course. Don't we all? That was the lesson that she learned that day. <laughs> Don't we She's all? like, where's my fish? I'm like, shut up. Yeah. You didn't like it. You didn't want it. And now you just want it because Gosh, mommy gave it away. That is like kids in a nutshell in our relationship with them for sure. It's ridiculous. It's okay. You taught her a good lesson that day. Yeah. I mean, I was a little bit kinder. I wasn't like, shut up. But like, yeah. she learned a lesson for sure. Good. But every once in a while, she's like, mom, I want a fish. And I'm like, do you not remember? We had one. Yeah. How old is she? She's five. Okay, cute. She's five and she rules this house. We all just do what she says. Literally, Ryan's little girl had him so wrapped around his finger. Whatever Bentley wants, Bentley gets. Oh my gosh, that was JoJo. That is JoJo still. She rules all of us. Yep. She's adorable. She she was um she was having a hard time with going potty. Okay. And my husband's like, if you go potty, we'll get you a prize. So she goes potty. We, he orders her this prize off of Amazon. It comes in the mail this week. She opens it. Ah, I don't like it. Starts throwing this huge tantrum, like full on tantrum screaming because she doesn't like the prize. When she picked it out, like she picked out the, on this prize, there was the biggest tantrum. I wanted to spank her butt. I wanted of to be course. like, girl, you just got a freaking prize. Like, be grateful. What does my husband do? It's okay, honey. Come pick out a different one. <laughs> of course. Are you freaking kidding yeah. me? You're like, are you no. freaking kidding me? Yeah. So I'm always the bad guy in the in the the parenting world. Same. He's I'm the. Mean. Oh, it's okay, sweetie. Was was mom not being nice? Do we feel like that's most marriages? It's so annoying. I know. I'm like, know. you're the favorite. The favorite. Because you don't Disneyland dad down. all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. All the time. I wonder if if we did have another kid and if it was a girl, 
how the dynamic would be because Bentley being the only girl in the house is kind of made for her. Yeah. I don't know if she could share share the attention. If she could handle it. Like she'd be like, I'm sorry, oh, she I gets know, a prize but then too. later on, like my sister. I know, the sister oh, thing. Gosh, I, I know, know, I know. But would you want more kids? That's a question. I'm old. I think I had to. It. So when I started dating Ryan, he was already fixed, actually. Snipped. And so fixed. I love it. You know, whatever, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Snippy snip. And he was young. Yeah. And so <clears throat> it was like something I had to like grieve that when I was. Dis- it was like a big thing. Yeah. Like, gosh, I love this man so much. I like want to be with him forever. But also if I want more kids, because he was like, no, we're good. Especially we have three. We're good. Yeah. So I had to kind of let go of that. And then the last year before he died, we were like exploring it and like actually had conversations. He was 35 at the time, 36. They said at your age, honestly, like sometimes we'll just do kind of in vitro style where they retrieve an implant from him because the reversal sometimes won't work or yada yada yada, I don't understand but I just pulled up that email the other day to like check the date on it and to be like oh my gosh because we were talking about it so that's I think maybe I could have it's like really weird and sad for me to be like I only have one but then obviously just the way that my life has played out I have Riker and Jojo um who knows what's to come and so I think I just have to be okay with like well I never would have thought I only had one kid myself I have three and I could potentially have more and lucky for me I feel like I have the heart and the capacity to love them like my own yeah and just hope that they'll want me and love me forever so will they for sure like selfishly I don't want to be pregnant again and I don't want to like start over would I ever regret it the second I hold it absolutely not no for sure but yeah, I know. It would be. I don't think so. It'd be never say never. It'd but be I a fun adventure. So. <laughs> it'd be a fun. Ad- Kim comes on in two years, fifty-two and I'm pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love. No love. Oh All right. gosh. Let's take out trash top a can. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. Trash top a can is brought to you by Road to Baby. Did you know that one in eight people in the U.S. alone struggle with infertility and have difficulties growing their family? The team at Road to Baby understand the pain and frustration that can come with infertility, and they are there to help you navigate that often bumpy road to parenthood. Road to Baby is a surrogacy, egg, and sperm donation agency based out of San Diego, California, who connects those in need with surrogates, egg donors, and sperm donors to help them grow their family. Road to Baby believes in fairly compensating those who make these dreams of parenthood come true. First-time surrogates working with Road to Baby receive a minimum of $56,000 for their incredible dedication. Egg donors are generously compensated at $10,000 per donation, and sperm donors each earn $5,000 for their first donation. If you've ever considered becoming a surrogate, egg donor, or sperm donor yourself, I encourage you to reach out to Road to Baby. You have the power to change lives and make parenthood dreams come true. And wait, there's more. If egg, surrogacy, or sperm donation isn't for you, but you know someone who might be a perfect fit, you can earn $1,000 in referrals for egg and sperm donors and $6,000 or more per surrogate referral. If you or someone you know is struggling with infertility, remember that you are not alone. The experts at Road to Baby are there to help you navigate this often challenging path to parenthood. Their experience and guidance can make all the difference in your journey. Road to Baby exists to help growing families and creating a life-lasting connection and making dreams a reality. If you're ready to take that first step or just curious to learn more about the process, schedule a free consultation with Road to Baby. Visit www.roadtobaby.com. R-O-A-D-T-O-B-A-B-Y.com. I just put in some new ones in here, so we'll see what you get. Biggest turnoff you think you have? Oh, biggest. Mine would be my breath. (laughs) get out of here my breath I feel like I my breath always smells like garlic or sometimes poop I don't know my kids always like your breath stinks I'm like thank you apparently I have bad breath biggest turn off I think I have I I mean I feel like that's valid like in the morning get away from me you do not want to smell my breath same like morning breath Mm. but like some people like just never have bad breath valid I'm not that person 
Same. Unfortunately. Same. I try really hard. I brush. I floss. I I like that one. I don't. Yeah. Mine's breath. Same. Please turn off. I'm. You're like nothing. I'm perfect. No. Are you kidding me? Me? Turn someone off? (laughs) Never. No. (laughs) No, 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 no. Never. Like, I mean, listen, I could sit here and pick myself apart, but I'm trying to think of something like, I mean, that's a valid one. You have really manly hands. I've always said that since the very, that's like high school Kim being like, so I could insecure. change one thing about myself. Wait, let me see your feet. hands. They're like really not cute. I have cute feet. What? But like they're like no knuckles. I know. Where's the camera? Okay, wait. I feel like our hands no, are No, yours similar. are very feminine. Mine are like chubby, weird, manly. No. I, and large. You're like wringing them out. I would never, ever Again, look Ryan at your Olson hands. and train just like, here what yeah i that's always something i've said interesting yeah interesting okay your man hands. like <laughs> quite literally man hands. like when i had to answer that question what would you change about you i would write my hands you know what hands are something you can't hide i know well if you like, don't like your hands you're my you can't hide them wedding ring photo will never be cute they're just like, like can you wrinkly? photoshop <laughs> can you give me like some literally wait that's crazy because i would never i your hands they're are not completely normal feminine to me. no they're like not no if you take my if i if you make me get short fingernails oh yeah. i have the ugliest hands i feel like i feel like nails are, really are what long, make pretty. i agree my hands look decent well i have to have nails because if you can imagine these without nails no, it's I, even I worse can't. Yeah. No, like on Pinterest, when I'm looking up like nail inspo, I see these women with these beautiful, beautiful. fingers. I know. So beautiful. I feel you on that. Like I don't yeah. have perfect fingers either. So I, I feel you on that. But yeah. that's never been one thing where I'm like, mm, I'm like, no, I would change a lot of other things before I yeah. changed my Also, hands. my eyebrows have never been able to recover from like high from school. The thin picking. Mm-hmm. Have you tried uh, Babe Originals Brow Serum? Yes. And it didn't work for you? Time. Oh my gosh, it gave me a unibrow. It worked so well. <laughs> Like hair okay. growing out of my whole head. Okay, maybe I need to try again. It was years ago. Yeah, maybe they have a new formula. Form, formulation? Maybe. Formula? Well, and, and I'm really bad at routine. So. Oh, you're not a routine girl? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. I'm a routine girl. Are you? Like yeah. you'll take the vitamins every day on the spot? I mean, well, I have to take my antidepressant every day okay. or I'm crazy. Okay. So, um, love that. That helps me, like, just when I do that, I do all the other things. But, like, good for you for recognizing and getting yourself help. So, you feel great. Yeah, yeah, no. Routine is, like, good for me. I need it. Yeah, I need need it. it. I'm really bad at it. You know, sometimes we just do. You and some, you lose We just do what we can. We're just trying our hardest. Literally. In every, every form. Every form. I'm going to pick one just because I'm curious what else we'll get. And then we can be done. I just don't want you to leave. Your style in three words. Basic, <laughs> casual, uh, basic, casual. <laughs> Way to hype yourself up, Kim. No, I'm like in work yoga clothes almost always. Comfortable, comfortable. Thank you, comfortable. Yeah, basic, but like casual, comfortable. Also, I buy a shit ton of stuff yeah that like, what's I your never style wear like do you like fun? like you're wearing pink you look like you like fun things you like cute I like clothes. fun things Those pants I like baggy stuff I like big sweaters yeah. I like like yeah I'm not like a dress up I don't like to get dressed up yeah so it's like stressful for me I'm in my like country girl era country mm-hmm. but I don't yeah. dress like that but like if I love a good country concert. Oh, country outfits. I'm going to Nashville. Oh my gosh. Did you find some cute stuff? I haven't gotten anything yet. And I'm kind of stressed. I'm leaving in three weeks and I need three out, four outfits. Okay. What's and Morgan your Wallen concert? Oh, fun. You I'm know. jealous. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, I'm going s- to, funny story really quick, Riley yes. Green. Oh, Do you know who that is? I don't. I didn't either. Who's Riley Green? <laughs> I need you to look him up. Is, is this... He- this is, is a funny story. So Did he DM you? Is he in your DMs? I wish. Can someone get Riley Green in my DMs? So I was sitting at lunch with Susie. She came okay. to visit a couple months ago. And Looking we were, I'm like, I just think that my next life is like this 
being this country stars woman and just like uh, proudly yeah. on the sides you know just like this is my man we are googling inside some little hole in the wall pho place in idaho falls idaho riley green single. single country singers and riley that's how we came to be um, um no this is perfect for you he like reminds me so much of ryan so it could be a little <laughs> a little no, weird like, this is perfect for you so like he's hot He's so hot. Yeah. I know. Um, but I could, I, I'm not sure I could ever. I know. I know. I'm not sure that. Um, Where does he live? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even think okay, I could I'll name a out. song. Okay. Have you tried sliding in his DMs? No. Yes. You want to know why? I lost a bet. And I'm like, try. hey, I'm really sorry. Lost this bet. Sliding into your DMs. It's like this long message trying to be like, I'm really not crazy. Please go to my Instagram and just see literally like death and sadness <laughs> and like divorce. That feels like a really good, good idea. Where does Ryan Green live? And I got like this much of a message and then it won't let you send any more of the oh, message. Oh, because the invite. <laughs> no. So if he ever sees my DM, Riley Green, I have more. Okay, Riley Green, we are going to clip this and we're going to p- post this. We should probably take this off. <laughs> we're going to post this. Riley Green, we have a hot, beautiful, single 29-year-old. That's it. Single 29-year-old. No. Totally. She She's ready. Yeah. She's ready. No. He No, he's gorgeous. So, like, does he have a concert coming up that you can Yo, just, Oh, like... sorry. I'm going. That's oh, what I was okay. getting at. Okay. Okay. I was like, I Yeah, it, like, like became this funny joke when, between me and my friends. I need to listen and to some of his so, music. Same. You and me both. <laughs> like, I should probably know a song before I go yes. to his concert. You and me both. Where does he? I think is, he sings. He lives in Alabama. Or he was born in Alabama. I'm just agreeing. Great. I think I should do my research. Yay. Um, He sings Grandpa's Never Die. You've heard that song. Nope. No. Okay. Nope. That's the only one I kind of But knew. um, I'm, I'm going to start doing my research. Morgan Wallen, though. He, wait, so he has a song good. featuring Luke Combs. What is it? Different round. Different round here. Love for him featuring Luke Combs love, I love that one so Not, yeah don't know it we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start becoming Riley Green stands we're gonna be the fangirls at the concerts but yeah I'm going to Nashville yeah. don't have any clothes but I leave on what day do I leave I leave April 30th right we leave April 30th I have three podcasts while we're there and okay, then good um we're going to the concert I'm so Just excited you too. So we're going for podcasting, and then my hair girl and all of her friends are going to wall in. Um, so we're doing that. Okay. But my style is like fun. Yeah. I like fun, unique things, like things that some people would go, that's ugly. I'm like, that's kind of fun. Yeah. I like, but I like to be comfortable. Yeah. So fun, comfortable, baggy. I like Same. baggy. Same. Baggy. And maybe one day that'll change. Like, yeah. maybe one day when I get a tummy tuck and I'm just like, I want to look snatched and I want everything to be tight. But it's almost like a sensory thing. Like, I don't like things like being tight on me. Same. Like, I really don't like it. So I don't even know if like after a tummy tuck, I'd be like, yeah, put on tight clothes. Like, yeah. I just like baggy stuff. Like, I don't like underwear. Same. I don't wear underwear. Ever. I hate underwear. Good for you. I'm proud that of That was the hardest part for me when we got married in the temple. Which I, mean, I don't wear. I don't wear that. Any, I don't wear garments a, anymore. But that that's was an very aggressive. Hard for me. Yeah, that was very hard for me. And like my sensory issues, like I that was hard for me like, too. I can't. And like, to get your this point, like not because we want to dress slutty. Yeah, no, no. I just don't yeah. like it. Same. I like baggy, comfy. Same. All the things. Like I don't even know the last time I wore a bra. Oh yeah, no. That was the greatest thing when I got my reduction and lift. I don't need to wear bras anymore. Yeah. Where before it was like. Yeah, got big, out same. I saggy had to things, do. just holding same. them up. <sighs> had to strap them up, strap like, them up. Not just any bra. You're like, I need an F to no, like truly. hold all this stuff. And mine was like mostly skin too, same. so it just like sagged, and it was just oh, yeah. hated. Hated. Like, look at you now. Look at me now with my anchor scar, yeah. anchor girly. Love, love, babe. love. 
Well, Kim, thanks so much for driving from Idaho to come take out trash with me. Yes. This was, was so much fun. <laughs> it was so good. I'm so grateful that you came. I love you. I love this you. This is full circle because like I said, I've been following you for so long and to like have you here to talk oh, in Well, life. all the people when I was like, maybe like open this up every so many people really like, Josie weekly trash Josie that weekly makes trash. me so, so happy you are loved and oh. I'm seeing it shared everywhere and I love this for you and like the cutest brand you're so fun you're the best Thank your you. words are way more fun than mine <laughs> comfy casual just like granola basic <laughs> hey I'm pretty basic too okay yeah. I got my hydro jug yeah. I'm a basic girl yeah basic girls especially in like the Utah Idaho I feel like we kind of all merge yeah we're all pretty basic over here. We got the straight end curls, sure. you know, which now I'm in my Dyson Air Wrap era, as you are as well. Like, how, but, but like, I do. How mine, are you getting that? I do mine differently. I'm, I don't. I don't even. I'm doing it wrong, but I like the way I do it, so I just keep doing it. This I'm way. sitting here with my prom girl, no, like I, rodeo I queen love hair from the Dyson Air Wrap, but that. Do looks you hold? So- do you hold your wand upside or up front? Oh. Like this. So I hold mine upright and I grab the hair and I let the the thing pull it together. Okay, but like it's like this thick. So it's oh, like Oh wait, what size do you have? I mean <laughs> <laughs> even this This is turning into a sexual OnlyFans podcast. It's like yeah. the girth is <laughs> like an inch, maybe an inch and a half. What is yours? I feel like mine, I feel like mine's like this big. Oh, I couldn't see. It's like three fingers. Thanks for, like... Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. Oh. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> I'll go grab mine. We can do a little tutorial, but that's um, what I do. But... Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's like, I feel like it's, yeah. <laughs> Well, I Kim, I love you. I love Thanks you. so much for coming. Thank you. Have the best week, you guys. And don't forget to take out your trash. Bye. Bye.